let's play this game called Scratches, which is a point and click and a slow build up horror game. That's all I know of, and I found it thanks to a YouTube channel. God recommended it to me because I watch a lot of YouTube and no, I'm not addicted to YouTube. Let's begin. I have been stalling this for a long time. Uh, director's cut, please. I'm playing the rest of the director's cut, so I'm gonna do the director's cut. Okay. and sounds like an old horror-esque horror aesthetic. at Blackwood Manor one cold Saturday morning amidst a thick veil of fog. The weather didn't look good, and there was an unnatural calm surrounding the area. Yet, I soon became entangled with the place. Space for a crap at house. Ah, October 12th, Saturday. What? Cloudy sky above me seemed rather unsettling and almost made me lost my balance. I felt the curious urge to run for shelter in my new home in the distance seemed very inviting. Can I move? Oh. Ah, okay. Yeah, it is a point and click game. So to move. Surely I could left click to move around whenever my finger was pointing forwards. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't be a, don't be a dick about it. Okay, so it's only the mouse, not using the keyboard. I'm not used to these kind of games though. There is a magnifying glass, but you need to pinpoint exactly where you want to touch it. Or, wait, I saw something. So I'm gonna go out. Logic did there that I could use or grab an object with a left click when my hand was grasping. I could not. I saw that. Come on, I saw that. And last time was just a clock. Yeah, it was just a clock. Okay, okay cool. When closer I should remember, the last that I could go back with left click. And my hand was pointing downwards. Alright, so let's go towards and check. Standing there in front of the door made me realize that I should right click to open the inventory. Now I could see that I was carrying the key my good friend Jerry gave me. It's rather obvious that I will have to grab the key with the left click. Son had a gut feeling that with another right click I could close the inventory. 
I have hens on, is that the reason why? Oh, I wanna read this. Nothing. It's not a book. The door to the house was locked. Fortunately. Fortunately because we have the key or Finally, I conclude I could use the key. The key to on the door with a left click to unlock it. A marvel, it's such a wondrous concept. Nice. Key with your four ball bricks. Ah, very little effort. The key unlocked the front door. supposed to check here anyway well let's just look around my handy magnifying glass can also allow me to examine an item while in my inventory I'm using it on that item good like that air flow I see hello. hello Michael it's me hey Jerry it's good to hear your voice my thoughts exactly. I was afraid it'd fall apart as soon as I laid my fingers on it. So how did you find everything? Do you like the place? It's hard to tell yet. I'm very impressed, that's for sure. You sound odd. Is everything okay? Yes, yes, yes. It's perfectly fine. It's just that I'm in awe. I mean, pleasantly surprised. This house is like a dream come true. So you do like it? You got me worried there for one second. I'm telling you, I'm going to turn this place into a factory of horror stories. Good. You ought to finish that book. I'm rooting for you, mate. You sure everything is in order? Well, I just got here. Let me have a look around, and I'll get back to you if I find anything strange. Excellent. I'll talk to you later. Nothing out of the ordinary. It's a phone that looks pretty old, so it looks pretty ordinary. Uh, out of the ordinary, I guess, but I guess not. Uh, I can't turn the other side. Oh, I can! Let's go! This picture is interesting. I can't even check it. Quite peculiar that I can't check anything. I can check there's something down here. Yeah, this is the first time I'm playing a kind of kind of game like this. Usually the games are players with a with a controller, so I just wanted to be a pianist. But eventually, found another use for my fingers. It's so suspicious in this day and age to say it like that. So this clock. Fancy rat clock, which sadly wasn't functioning. It's not the ordinary. The place is full of exquisite, albeit aged candelabras. A generic, generic standard lamp. Stella was elegant and tasteful. As long as he believes that. It seems like I'm missing something. It was all gibberish to me. Nothing out of that. Is it sneaking in the shell? Oh, yeah, 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 the little drawer wouldn't open. But the big drawer, well, that wouldn't open. No, smoking can kill you. Especially when the cigars are decades old. You don't know if you don't try. What does this, this do? In fact, this wasn't the proper place to leave the key. Ah, okay, okay, okay. So I need to find a proper room to put my cases in. I can play with a globe, but for now that's it. Nothing out of the ordinary, for sure. I'm getting the hang of this. 
Most of the clocks in the house weren't working. Why weren't they working? The Pullman granting the title of construction engineer to James T. Blackwood. Namely, should remember. Several trophies for remarkable accomplishments adorns the room. And we'll be going to the desk. I mean, the desk is the place. Do I am intrigued at this fireplace? Yes. Remnants of a previous fire. Do we see anything more of that? Nope. That's about it. And now everything is silence. I don't like the silence. Place is full of exquisite old beige candelabras. A glass? The glass was empty. Petty. I could have used a drink. You would have drank something that was was out here for a while. It's a bunch of uninterested books. I don't believe that. Well, you're a writer. That's what I'm presuming. Oh. What did I get? What did I get? The envelope was empty. Why did I grab an envelope then? Suitcase was holding some of my stuff and was awfully heavy. My loyal top hider was inside the case. Another book. Hey, I'm not done. Check the book. Okay, cool. What was it? The upper one? It's ink and some pictures. Cigars. Is it, I guess, a screwdriver? That one was locked. Okay. This is a book? Has more details than the other books. Oh, I can't read that. Right. February 6th. The construction of the railway bridge is almost complete and went quite smoothly. It took longer than I expected, yet I wish it would have lasted longer. It will be very sad to leave South Africa. I've become so attached to it. Its culture. Its art. For the past few months that I can't help feeling as if it was already a part of me. I will surely return someday. Soon, hopefully. Although, I am afraid there's a small, there's a great deal of work to be taken care of back in old Britain. Fortunately, I made good friends here, who were ecstatic about my new appreciation of their country. They have offered me some wonderful objects as a token of gratitude, which I have already created and got ready to ship. Along with many trinkets, I bought myself. It looks like I'm about to start a very substantial collection. It's a good thing Catherine agreed to move into our new home. Although I fear several renovations will have to be made. Even more if I'm attempting to start a serious new hobby. Hey man, hoarding. African stuff. Seems I'll have to get back to work. John Patterson has just told me some natives. Are causing trouble. A very unfortunate thing. Although, I'm secretly rejoicing. February 12th. The natives will leave. It's not like they're causing trouble, so much as they're unsettling our workers. The only complaint so far has been distraction. They just stand still between the trees staring at us, without blinking an eye. I've watched them for a few minutes, and they truly seem like some tenebrious statues. At first, it was just annoying, but lately I have be has become downright creepy. They seem to be stalking us. So it's not like they're hindering the construction, but there's a general uneasy feeling as if they were about to jump at us at any moment. I think I will hire some protection as a measure of precaution. Oh, I can. February 15th. Fascinating. I've been looking into these natives. They live in a nearby village and are a very small group, yet they seem to manage quite well. I have thought of them as quite an uncivilized tribe, but their movements are calculated, and one can perceive a sense of careful organization in their tasks. Oddly enough, they seem to be very brutish and their aspect looks awful. 
although I couldn't take a good look at their facial features as I followed one of them completely on my own, and it could have been dangerous getting any closer. Also, the village is poor and very rough, but some of the shacks lapped out as inviting or special. It made me very curious. I will try to come closer tomorrow. The next day, my second expedition to the village of the natives has been failed, foiled by an unexpected problem at the bridge. I'm afraid it was due to a slight miscalculation on my part, an indication that I should be focusing more on the task at hand and put my sudden love for all African things aside for a moment. It was my fault, and I accept it. February 20th. They're at it again, working beyond the forest. It's amazing how they have changed our perception of the surroundings. At first we were delighted by the quiet and nature of the place. Now, we fear what horse might be concealed in that dark and foreboding cloak of trees. The tops of the taps loom above us, overshadowing the bridge, and strange noise haunts our meals. Even the river, telling ungodly secrets. We could be, of course, a bit more sensitive towards distractions, but I can't help feeling the area has, in fact, become more sinister. And yet, I'm still looking forward to satisfying my curiosity about the tribe. This game is about a tribe? Like the, the house we're in is built on a tribe? Tribal site? That never sounds good. And uh, February 24th. Unless I found something more about the neighboring tribe. This is an incredible finding and I just can't withhold my excitement. Some elders at the local town happens to know about them. The only three stories they heard. The most surprising thing is that the tribe was assumed to be extinct long ago. But according to my vague descriptions, the elders think that we could be dealing with a, a legend here. Everything they ever learned of them was during their childhood when the tribe was stalking the town, much in the same way they have been stalking us. People used to call them... Dawn. The dollar? As such was the sound of screams heard echoing late in the night. They'd come out into the streets and see an evil glitter atop a hill in the distance. Some would say it was a fire, others the cursed spirit of an ancient god. Whatever it was, they say the bright light amid those fantastic screams was buzz bone chilling. A macabre scene would suddenly stop just as it had begun out of nowhere, never to be seen again in days to come. Intervals between those horrible nights became longer and longer until they soon faded into oblivion. The tribe apparently had retreated back into obscurity until now. They were later known as the Dalmar, a rather more scientific name, although none of the people I spoke with could possibly remember its origin. I find it extremely surprising that nobody has ever heard about this tribe with the exception of a few townspeople. It must be incredibly rare, and judging by the stories passed on from generation to top, town, very old. How long has this go on? February 27th, I will confess that I've become nearly obsessed with this strange tribe. I see them as the most prized goal of my appreciation towards all South African things. A dangerous yet irresistible reward. I feel as if they were my discovery. I simply have to study them before leaving. I fear I won't have a chance to ever again. It has become an important goal of mine. Even more important than finishing the bridge. See, hey, it's an obsession. March 4th. Finally, I've managed to see them. My god, what a disturbing spectacle. When we arrived, they were moving around the village very slowly, not speaking or communicating with each other, each minding his or her own business, completely alien to the rest of the world. They were filthy looking, coarse and downright disgusting. Couldn't see any weapons. But they could have been stored somewhere. 
It was all very strange behavior in the tribe. It must be quite unique. Then, as if they had suddenly all become possessed by some wild spirit, they began shaking spasm spasmodically and screaming like mad. Some of them dropped to their knees and lifted their heads in the sky, eyes blank and moaning in an indescribable way. Two of them walked away, still in a monotonous and slow manner, and in great contrast to the rest of the scene, to a shack. The next minute, they brought out into the open an odd-looking mask. Its shapes, colors, and overall looks, while unsettling, were mesmerizing, and I felt instantly hypnotized by it. I turned my modest collection of African curiosities into dull and uninteresting items. The mask was very ominous, and the whole tribe seemed to greatly revere it. Soon, they began to gather around it and move in circles, fluttering and chanting a guttural psalm. Judging by their motions and aspect of the whole ritual, it must have been some kind of war ritual. When I say that, everything went silent. More. It's still the same day, March 4th. I'm not sure how to explain what happened next and I feel my pulse is already throbbing. Words fail me to recount the most disturbing thing I've ever witnessed. One of the male villagers walked into the middle near the mask by his own will. It was an almost automatic act. All of a sudden, the remaining members became silent. I can't tell for how long it lasted, but I was afraid to breathe. I need a breath. <laughs> I think Dalby and the others were also scared. They wouldn't even blink. I remember being soaked wet and, ex and expectant. The silence was so unnatural. Then, a few members separated from the people, circling the mask, and... and... jumped on the single villager, beating him to death. Holy crap. To be completely faithful to the event, the small crowd tore him apart. They grabbed his legs in twos and threes and twisted them in a manner I dare not describe. His face was disfigured with their bare fingernails and teeth, and the torso soon disappeared under the frenzied tangle of hands. In a matter of a few minutes, the villager was turned into a rat's sack of bones. Not one of the attackers had the compassion to snap his neck. During the sickening process, all was very methodical, as if it was just another mundane task. The most terrifying aspect, though, was that the victim didn't even cringe. The silence was so deep I could hear his flesh ripping. I would expect any living creature to scream his guts out in such a condition. I can't tell whether he was drugged or half asleep, but I did recognize him dancing like everybody else before walking into the middle of the circle. It was the most outrageous and sadistic sacrifice I have ever heard of. I don't think I will ever forget what I saw. My intentions of approaching further, even if they didn't have any weapons at hand, vanished. Those creatures, I dare not call them human beings, could have killed my whole company in the blink of an eye with their rage. They seemed to be completely out of themselves, willing to destroy anything intruding into their path. While the images of the sacrifice still haunt my thoughts, I still can't seem to forget that mask. It was so deceptive. Simple, and yet perfect in its design. The captive? The Captival? I don't know. I haven't seen any... At oh. It's torn. I haven't seen anything like it. I surely would love to take a better look. I feel the dull mar, dangerous as they are, could be the most important ethnical finding in decades. What I've seen today is crying. Oh, it's for some further investigation. Just can't leave them like that. I'll never forgive myself. And the mask. That mask. I was ecstatic after reading the journal. 
The tail was incredible. Sure you are, sure you are. It took a while. Interesting uh, story of a journal. Obsessed with African stuff when he went to Africa. Building a bridge next to a village. Bill just kept staring at them, stalking them. The, the foreigners or the construction workers. The obsessed guy went further into the village. Saw people walking slowly, not, not minding all their own business. Then at one point, they all shaking. Shaking. Then one of them go into the, goes into the shed, puts on a mask. And then they all start to attack and kill. A villager or someone who intruded them because that part was a bit vague if it was a villager or if it was someone that went inside the village at the wrong time ah, well, nice book Twiggies. <laughs> I like how oh yeah all oh, cool now let's go to click clackers yo Mark Lackeys, please. I'm only wondering if the rest of this place will have the same feeling. I didn't come out of this place. This is a dining hall. Study next to a dining hall. Interesting. What are, are those napkins? Tablecloths, napkins. That certainly isn't my thing. I'm pushing it back. This thing. Not, not the ordinary. If you would say that. It was just some useless junk. It was just some useless junk. No. Generic style lamp still was elegant and tasteful. This guy has no sense of where he's in. He only thinks about his work. I guess that's what happens when you don't water the plants for a long time. They die. A couple of beautiful va vases made of shiny glass are standing on the table. The booze! I certainly wouldn't have minded trying those expensive wines. So that nobody would have been around to page me. Yep, I would. I would probably would have done the same thing. It's painting. What the hell? Interesting. Cool. But interesting. Go further. Corridor. Or right, hallway. Several va vases of African craftsmanship are standing against the moon. The west window. This is kind of function stuff. I wait, I'm just looking around the place. The door was stuck beyond hope. Generic lamp. People working in Africa, I presume. Or somewhere else. Could have been everywhere, anywhere. Wait, 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 wait. what was he doing? Is that his flesh? Or is he skinning shrimp? They're eating also something with seafood. I'm scared that there's something behind. Behind the thing. This is a kitchen. There are plenty of kitchen utensils in the house ready to be used. Well, why, why don't you use them? Oven? The door to the oven was firmly stuck in place. Well, too bad there is no microwave in this day and age, this time. College jars and cans adorn the kitchen. This looks like they abandoned and just left. Like the owner died. 
The interior of the refrigerator was begging for some serious cleaning. Not to mention a powerful disinfectant. Eh, well... Not my place. Not my house, not my problem. That would have sent. Let's, walk, let's walk back one once. Let's walk back once. Apparently the water wasn't running. Need to fix that. We are first things we have to do here. What's with this? There are plenty of kitchen utensils in the house ready to be used to count these kitchen utensils. <laughs> oh my god. Different sounds just scaring me. Wait, where am I going? Wait, wait, where does this lead to? Where is this going? Hello? Wait, 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 wait. Uh, can I can go back once. Thank you. Blackwood? Is this a catacomb? The thick wire was tied between the handles, securing the door to the crypt. Yeah, I wanna go to a catacomb. I'm, I'm getting out of here. Oh, I curse myself before it... Something was actually done in this place. It's holy crap. Oh my god, I think there's always someone standing. Yeah, it's like someone's watching me. This door is so old, I swear. The light switch. I intended to brighten up the whole place, but to my surprise, the lights won't work. Then we have to fix them! Okay, let's go up. Ah. Uh, no, 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 no. It looks so dark. I hate it. Ah. I remember that Jerry said a nice room had been prepared for me upstairs. <gasps> Why? Wait, upstairs? Or you mean fully up? In this place? Oh, this is a bathroom. <laughs> there were a couple of towels in the bathroom. A great deal of repair work would be necessary before he would attempt to take a shower. So how long is he how long are you gonna stay here? Water wasn't running, yeah. Feeling. Toilets. Toilets. Towel rack, I guess. Bathtub. Washing basin. Mirror next to a bathtub for some reason. You like you wanna see yourself being wet. Oh, no. Oh. This place is all huge. I can go further up. I'm gonna go further up first. Oh, this has this at least has some lights. No stairs are so dark. Uh, does he mean this place? Locked. The door seems to be stuck. That one isn't. Is this the place? This is another toilet. It's like a, an in house. Ah. Construction work. Okay, good job. I'm going back downstairs. There's probably not much of a reason to go go here yet. I say yes. You probably need some kind of hiding place or something, maybe. I don't know. I don't know what kind of enemy they're gonna be. What is the what is the intent? What is the actual horror? Is it some kind of past thing? Is it this the African spirits? What's what's it gonna be? And why is the room so far? I was unusually surprised after entering this room. Some kind of gallery theme being African culture. Yeah. Mm hmm. Even the the ambience died down. Uh, pots, pots. Stuff, hats.
World Arts, 19th of September, 1962. Dear James, I'm going to make use of this resting moments to thank you once again for your kindness. Those shields that you have donated to us are wonderful. If it weren't for you, our section dedicated to African objects wouldn't be anything else other than a mere collection of photographs. Also, I've been looking into these dull mar you mentioned. I have to say, they seem to be rather fantastic. If it wasn't for your personal account of their activities, I dismissed them as old wives' tales. I found a few books mentioning them, and I'd be very happy to lend them to you. They will be moved at once. I hope you can satisfy your curiosity. Cordially yours, Simon Russell. Huh. I didn't even notice the, the thing. I thought I was grabbing the, the hat. Well, let's have a check. Why, why are we looking at this? What's the reason to look at this? Looks like in here, Jambe. This display was holding perhaps the most impressive items in the room. Don't touch any of those. Beautiful vases. Wow, those were mesmerizing. Isn't that a thing that when you took something from Africa, it actually... Did he actually bought it, or like, is it a gift, or did he steal it from in the heritage places? All those masks, they made me feel very uneasy. They seemed to be guarding the room. Why is there one mask missing? Is it the same thing about the every mask? Something here is yet. I have a feeling I will have to check this place again. There's a lot of culture in here. I'm not, I don't want to tamper with anything, but our guy is probably a tamper for like, hey, horror stories. Something that looked like a lion's claw was firmly attached to a necklace. Probably. I'm not. I'm not gonna. Gonna check it. I'm just gonna get out. Room over here is Africa and Danger Room. I, I'm gonna say it's a danger room. The entire vibe was off. Oh, this looks like a looks like a sleeping place. Bedroom. I like how I can zoom into every picture, but they're kinda useless. For now, I guess. I didn't want to go through a bunch of trinkets and perfumes. Eh, hey, fine. And look at my dashing shelf. The bed seemed to be comfortable, but too fancy for me. Does that matter in any way? Fancy or not, it's still a nice bed. Nothing else? No. Why? Why? Like, why can I move that? So why can I look up? This is for later, sure. Nice paintings, nice paintings. That's why that place that that uh, Jerry has. As soon as I left the room, I had a curious feeling of having missed something. I missed something? What do you mean? What do you mean I missed something? something. This? A diploma was displayed in the shelf. Apparently the people who lived in the house were very educated. Yeah, can you read it for me? I'm gonna check under a bat. Just to be sure, game. 
I'm gonna check under your bed. However it is, something that is striking me on in this room as well is that it's too fancy. I mean, late misses. That could have something. It is this thing. What do I do with this thing? There's something out of the ordinary. Nice. The thing it sees is that. Before it sees in the window. Maybe there's only something under the pillows. Can I check under the bed? So I shouldn't. I cannot check on the bed, so I shouldn't. So whatever our guy is missing. It's his own fault for not wanting to check this trinket house. Oops. Oh, this is it. Oh. The guy got angry. And I'm guessing his wife had a miscarriage. That's sad. What? What? Why am I opening this? Nothing out of the ordinary. If you say nothing out of the ordinary, why are you opening a pocket watch? Makes no sense. Nothing in there and nothing in there. So you checked everything, right? You're done. realized that this had to be my room. It became evidence why, as I glimpsed a gorgeous view to the huge window. Just in case I tried again, but still, there was no power. And I can try. I can try. Checking the view by the window, he said. The view was inspiring. Jerry has picked the right room for me. So it'll be ideal. I'm doing my work. It would be. Why are we it was too eerie for the bat? I would speak of past. past tense because our guy actually survived whatever happened. The books in the room were rather boring. No horror novels. Unbelievable. A beautiful oak desk was standing against the window with an extraordinary and aspiring view. No? Well, I, I can see it. Let's continue further. A trinket place. It's a funny. Funny painting. The stones in the fireplace were cold to the touch. This was not used. Crinkles. It's in the back. Oh, Dr. Splice. What the? What is with that? And it was like old documents on how to. And human body works. Pretty creepy. I grabbed the telescope, which seemed to be about the only useful thing in the bag. Why did I pick the telescope? I'm trying to listen to something or something. It was too early to go to bed. I mean. Well, I guess I can just put my job right over here. Yep. Shoot it. Put it. Put it away. That's it. Now. I was, e I was eager to start doing some work, but the idea of exploring the place was too tempting. No, I don't wanna. I don't wanna. I don't wanna check the rest of the place. Oh, oh there's my. Can I. There you go. 
Ten. Something. Barbara. The name was Barbara. Vanishing town. Passing traveler comes across a small town of fat shrunks and a corner wall in woods. Find a sound. Please, sir. It's void of any signs of life. Houses, shops, down the hall, church. No human being to be seen. The traveler informed the authorities of a nearby town of this fantastic event. The next day, an officer accompanied by two policemen visits Fat Shrunk. Except everything is back to normal. Ten years later, John Parker, a journalist, reluctantly accepts the assignment to investigate these strange events as they have now grown into a persistent local legend. Could it have been a practical joke by that anonymous traveler, or did something truly strange take place in their vanishing down? Things become more mysterious when Parker learns no inhabitant of Fetch Rock remembers what happened on that day. Okay, so this book is from Michael Arth... Arth Hate. Weird surname for someone who writes books. And he is a fan of H.P. Lovecraft. H.P. Lovecraft was alive and suddenly decided to write his take on the Wicker Man. The results would be this book. Deep, engaging, re reading, and downright terrifying. And he had, uh, was born in Providence, Rhode Island, London, England, settled later in London, England. He is American. He's a presence when the goal is to scare people. Fresh and compelling writing style. Well, several short stories in mystery horror magazines, his upcoming book is eagerly anticipated by his legion, new legion of fans. That's probably all we're making now. No more reading. Michael. It took me months, but at last I think I managed well. I mean think, so to speak, as there are only a few, very few details left. But I can confirm with certainty that the house is yours. I owe you an apology because I didn't think it would take me that much time. I tell you, I'd have never thought that finding a Victorian house and no more and no less than in Rothbury would have been so hard. The majority of the old houses in the region are either impossible to live in, or they belong to the aristocracy. As if that wasn't enough, as if that wasn't enough, you and your bloody whims. Was it really that necessary being so cut out from town? Why all this sudden need for solitudes? Well, as long as you don't become one of those typical hermit riders. Anyway, this beauty will take your breath away. Belong to a wealthy family that always took great care of it. In the mid-60s, it's become the property of one person. I believe a friend of this family. He lived there for about five years or so and then abandoned it. Yes, you're right right. Abandoned it. As far as I know, this lunatic, a renowned doctor, spent his last days getting drunk in lousy bars before vanishing from the, from the face of the earth. Why someone would do that is beyond me. The house then became the property of the National Trust, and surprisingly enough, no one ever did anything about it. That is, until I rescued it from oblivion, of course. It took me a lot of work, so I hope you like it. The price is just as we discussed earlier. I know it's hard to believe, but the price of the interior was never agreed upon. So whatever you find inside, be it furniture or long-lost Ram... Ram... Or long-lost Rembrandt, it's yours. Just remember our deal. If you find anything of great value, you have to share it. Now, I won't bother you. Or if your sofa collection happens to be valued in the thousands. But if you bump into a hidden cache of money, you, you never know, really. Then I want a piece of it. Wait a second. If you happen to sell any important item, you find inside a house such as your sofa collection, you have to get a pack, get a part too. Business is business, my friend. By the way, I sent two people over yesterday to clean it from top to bottom. Six years without having this must have left a nice coat of dust, don't you think? They kind of do wonders, though. They're going to need weeks to fully clean that place. Oh, they told me the house seems to have a rat problem, but you can't have it all. Should you need anything, they'll have it to give me a call. Your friend, Jerry. Cool. Cool. Jerry P. Carter, real estate agent. Cool. Got me more smokes. I don't know the need to write on that. Huh. 
I'm a writer with a writing thing. Cool. Cool. Okay.